Good morning, everybody. Uh, I guess I'll start uh, briefly by stating that uh, a very, very difficult decision yesterday. I met with uh, Bruce in the afternoon, um, both you know professionally and personally. Uh, I want to thank he and uh, and his family, Julie and uh, and Cole and Shannon, uh, for what they've uh, you know really done both on and off the ice for the Boston Bruins, the organization, and uh, again a. a a really tough day overall, but uh, had to make a decision that I felt in the best interest of where our team is at now and moving forward. And uh, I'd be happy to answer your questions. I guess, I guess, why now? What about where the team is now? Did you feel like this was the right time to do this? Um, the timing uh, after, you know, taking a few weeks um, to unpack, uh, a lot of things happened over the course of the year. Um, and, and where I thought the direction of our team was currently. And, and equally, uh, you know, with some of the surgeries and some of the things coming out, um, where our team was going to be going forward and impacting our club, I just felt that uh, the messaging and the, and the voice um, that was going to be required, uh, I felt we needed a new direction. And, um, you know, we had uh, I'd met with, with uh, the coaching staff like I normally do to go over you know, not only the year and their their feeling um, of where our team was, what we were capable of achieving. Uh, and then I met with Bruce afterwards as well, uh, talking about his staff. Uh, at that point in time, we had made a decision, he had made a decision that uh, Kevin Dean wasn't going to be extended. Um, you know, we had had, you know, talks during the course of the year uh, about, about he and Kevin and their relationship, and you know everybody was aware that there was a little friction there at some point in time. They got past that and, and went back to work as, as both of them as professionals, and, and I think have a long history. And and then I just went back to work and, and talking with our group, um, you know, be it scouts, management, uh, certainly in ownership, and uh, and just made a clear decision that uh, you know I needed to change, and um, and that's where I arrived yesterday afternoon. What's the Hello? feedback from? And we've gone through exit meetings, you know, I, I've done it at every level. Um, you know, they're not driving the bus in terms of making my decisions. I, I honestly believe that they have, uh, they impact our hockey club more than any of us. Um, they're invested uh, and, and I think they, they want to know how invested the organization is. I, I think to take anything away from, you know, what they're trying to accomplish as a group, you know, I honestly believe that it, it doesn't matter what they're necessarily saying individually. It's collectively as a group and to, to how much they think they can accomplish. And they agreed with me because I had used a statement that uh, we had left something on the table and they felt the same way. Um, young or old, I think there's a, a you know a message delivery that I think uh, a, a new voice will, will resonate with them. As a group, were they disgruntled? Disgruntled. With as coaching group, staff? You say, you say they, they come not to the group consensus, but as a group, were they disgruntled with Bruce? No, I don't, I don't think that's the overriding. Uh, I think they think, like I do, that Bruce is a terrific coach. And I think that uh, um, you know, have a tremendous amount of success, as he did here, um, you know, in his next opportunity. And I think every player would, would agree with that. He's a terrific coach. So uh, going forward, where does he fall short in terms of where your team is today? Because ultimately, that's a decision, right? Yeah, again, I felt that uh, both um, the message and and, uh, and how it was being delivered and, and more importantly, maybe how it was being received, um, young and old. And that's where I referenced, you know, both younger and older players and, and taking ownership of it as I would, you know, and I do with, with where our roster is at and the changes that I, you know, ultimately have to make. Um, and I think the players, you know, felt that we're very well prepared. Um, but at times, you know, young and old, they struggle, you know, and, and sometimes that's the voice that, uh, that, that's in their, in their head. And, uh, you know, I think ultimately they had to make a, de a decision that, that takes us in a different path. A lot of fans are surprised and upset about this decision. Did you anticipate that kind of reaction? Well, if you, if you go back, uh, you know, when I promoted Bruce, I, I think there was a similar reaction. And I expected it then, and I expected it today. Um, it's not a comfortable position to be in when you've got a popular coach, uh, both publicly and, and, uh, and the amount of success he's had. Um, 
yeah, it's going to be an unpopular decision, and it's not going to resonate, and it didn't sit well with me. Um, very difficult decision, as I referenced both personally and professionally, but, uh, you know, the rhetoric behind, you know, at times you hear about, uh, you know, the Bruins organization, the Jacobs family about being, you know, uninvested owners and absentee owners is so far from the truth. It, you know, they are very present. You know, when I go to write plans in front of both Cam and Charlie and, and Mr. Jacobs and, and, and that organization, you know, they expect, you know, as I referenced, you know, a few weeks ago, holding to a standard of best in class. And Bruce has been a part of a lot of success we've had. So, yeah, I believe the fans were going to be, you know, upset. And uh, as it coming upon me to make the right decisions, uh, both personal decisions, personnel decisions, as well as, as, uh, as staff decisions. And that's ultimately what I'm going to try and continue to do. Will the ownership have any feedback on Bruce? I make my recommendations. I'd, I've spoken to them over the period of time and made my recommendations as to where I was leaning. You know, a few weeks ago, I took last week with the Combine and, uh, and then ultimately came back over the weekend and, and, uh, and made my final recommendation and, uh, and got their support. Bruce can be you know, pretty candid and pretty critically <laughs> Part of the difficulty just receiving the message, or you know, with the players, things like that. Is that part of the issue? I think Bruce is is very honest. He answers a question honestly, uh, articulately. Uh, I'd say that the vast majority of those times, Bruce would have said the players have heard that same message before he's delivered publicly, um, and I think he's stuck to that. Uh, you know, um, I don't think any players necessarily would be smart, uh, caught off guard. You know, nobody. Necessarily, as I referenced a few weeks ago, the construction criticism, you know, the word criticism is most, most of the time with people here. And uh, sometimes it's not easy, and, and he just wants to, to make sure he's clear and direct in his messaging and, and, uh, and not contradictory. Are you realistic for the next guy to take this group further, or is this more like 15, 16, where it might be like a sort of soft rebuild? Good question. Um, I, I, I feel that. Where our group, what we were able to accomplish during the year in, 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 the, in the bulk of January, February, March, is a good hockey team. Now, that being said, with the injuries that we have and, and, uh, and where the players come back health-wise, that could dictate that. And the start, the start that we get off to may dictate that. You know, Our goaltending, I expect, uh, made some, some headway throughout the year, and I think that's hopefully going to continue. If they put the, forth the investment, in, you know, in, in Sway's case, maturity and experience that he's going to gain, I think our defense, albeit needs to get healthy um, as a group, uh, is pretty strong. You know, the question looms with Bergeron. You know, uh, that, that, that's the question in terms of, you know, when you're talking about bringing back a similar type of, of, uh, of roster, that uh, he's a big part of that. And, you know, I still have to wait for that decision. I don't have any clarity on that as I stand here today. So I, you know, I'm not going to fully answer the question because I don't have that answer as I sit. Now, we, we are going to, to take a shift, not unlike in, in 15, where we institute some younger players and, and, uh, and we have to continue to do a good job of that when they're ready. You know, putting players in when they're not ready, it's not going to help for anybody. You know, these guys want to win. Um, we've done a, a, a pretty good job over the course of, of, uh, of that time period of reference of being very competitive. We just didn't get it done. You know, 19, we were close, um, and we've been close. Um, I just didn't think we played our best hockey that we were capable of playing against Carolina, and I don't take anything away from Carolina and, and what they accomplished, and I would think they'd say the same thing against the Rangers, you know, to drop a game seven. You mentioned ownership. Would, do you think that they would – Except if a small step back is taken, just given where the team was last year, if there are lures, if it's a wild card, if it's a fringe wild card, it's a first round exit, whatever it may be, do you think that you can do your job towards a rebuild and keep it? Yeah, my job relative to keeping it, I think I've made decisions, whether it be in my last year of my contract or where I'll be in my first year of my contract. It's in the best interest of the Boston Bruins. You know, that, that's not why I stand up here today to worry about my job. Um, as far as what my recommendations are, you know, they're not caught off guard in any way, shape, or form of the directions that I need to, to, to move. You know, I'm well in advance in terms of how I think we are. and Injuries are going to be a part of that. Um, but we're a competitive group, uh, and we're going to remain a competitive group. Um, but we may need to infuse at some point in time. If we have the injuries and things that catch up to you that you just can't get out from under, that's a problem. And uh, and in the Bergeron, as I referenced, you know, last time I was here, 
is, uh, you know, could be a directional shift as well. Well, talk about bringing somebody mentioned discipline, uh, execution. You said Carolina was a hard matchup for you. How does a new coach kind of flip that on set? Well, I mean, I'm always process driven. I think the structure of our hockey club, you know, will remain. I do believe coaching, uh, you know, obviously the talent. You watch Edmonton and, uh, and Colorado get up and down the ice last night. Uh, you know, it's a talent driven league. Um, but structure, uh, you know, how you can defend. You know, you look at Tampa and why the success they've had. Uh, you know, we're a good club. You know, you're in the top part of the leagues for reasons. Um, Sometimes it depends on where you are in your cycle. You know, teams have been in, you know, in a position. I mean, you know, it's the first time, you know, Colorado's been in the Stanley Cup Finals for 20 years. They've got a, they've amassed a hell, you know, Joe's done a hell of a job, you know, Chris and, uh, and Craig Billington. And obviously they, they, they've, uh, they got themselves to the doorstep and, um, and other teams are in a similar fashion. You know, we've been a team that's been very competitive and, and uh, I want to continue to do that. It may take you know, a time period where, not in like 15, where we felt that we needed to make some changes in the, uh, and where we had several players on long-term deals. And, uh, and I made some very tough decisions at that point in time, trying to infuse some younger players. And, and, you know, at times we did it well and other times we fell short. Fully acknowledge that along the path here as well. So we need to continue to do a better job in all those areas. We hope to, to remain competitive. What are the qualities that uh, you're looking for in the, in the next coach? What are the most important sort of priorities? For the yeah, I, I, I'm still going to be a process driven and, and, and structure guy. I do believe that we can continue to evolve, uh, involving our defense. Um, you know, we've been a, a, an upper echelon power play and penalty killing team. Uh, I think that needs to remain. You're seeing that rear its head in the playoffs. You know, you watch Florida that had a, a, a ridiculously good power play during the regular season that sputtered in the playoffs and it probably cost them a little bit. Uh, so I think those are difference makers, you know, as you're going along. Again, I, I don't dictate how the league's going to, you know, how the refereeing's going to go, but I think you're seeing a trend in that area that special teams are certainly playing a big part of it. The goaltending's going to be a part of it. So the coach has to have the communication skills to be able to bridge that gap when older and younger players. I think that's paramount now with, uh, with integration. Uh, you know, as I said, in a perfect world, all the players are overcooked or overbaked, which, you know, Kenny Holland and, and, uh, and my peer group have used that terminology. Uh, and we won't be any different, but, you know, I go back, you've asked me about the Lysels of the world, only when they're ready. I mean, David Pasternak is a great example of that a number of years ago. You know, we didn't necessarily believe he was ready, but he came in and scored against Philadelphia. And next thing you know, he's in our lineup for the rest of the year and, and impactful moving forward. So that, those will be the challenges that uh, we try and find the balance of development and uh, an infusion of talent. And, and the coach, the new coach is going to have to be able to communicate and bridge that gap from, you know, from older players and communicating with them and holding them to a standard that, uh, I think we'd all feel is necessary. And, and in this town, it is necessary, you know, to hold a team to a competitive standard. You know, that, that coach has to walk that walk. Do you have any candidates in mind? Or no. I have a list of candidates that, uh, but the search is going to take me some time to go through and do my due diligence and uh, continue to talk to our staff and interview, you know, from a wide base and, and learn, learn about what, what other people outside the game, you know, how they view our younger players and how they view our team as it is. What's the status of the assistants right now? Both Joe and uh, and Chris Kelly are under contract. I've had discussion with Bob Asenza, so I'll see where, where, where that one lies. As I referenced, Kevin Dean it won't be extended. And, uh, uh, no. I, I mean, I, I don't categorically say that because I'm going to hire a new head coach and, and uh, if he decides he wants to interview Kevin, um, I know Kevin will be looking at other opportunities elsewhere, but uh, I would leave that up to the head coach, but it's unlikely at this point in time. Have you agreed to a finalized journal? I haven't finalized anything. As I referenced, you know, a number of weeks ago, I have an indication you know, as I've charted a course for this organization that I'll be back. Did you have a chance to meet with Bruce yesterday? I did. Yeah, I met in person with Bruce yesterday afternoon. How did he take it? Not well, um, as I didn't in delivering it. You know, I, I, I sat there and, and said I'm the same guy that six years ago sat with you to to believe in you, and I sat there yesterday believing him as a as an excellent head coach. It's just I made a a, a very difficult decision, and I had to deliver the news as as I would uh, in person, and and, uh, and discuss some of the things where we both fell short, and not not uh, not getting the job done, and wishing him well. With um, you know, it's only a matter of of when, not a matter of if he has the next opportunity. Sorry. Did you get the sense that all coaches evolve? 
but did you get the sense that Bruce was just firm in his way? Well, I think Bruce has evolved. I've been working with Bruce for 14 years. I've watched him grow into, and it's the reason why he was hired, uh, you know, six years ago, or I promoted him six years ago because I knew what uh, what his skill set as a coach was. And uh, you know, as far as evolving, I think his confidence as a head coach and the, the messaging that he wants to deliver, I think is exactly as as he wants it to be. Um, you know, has it change with the, the group that's still here and as, as effective with the, still, with the groups here. And that's, that's, that was my determination, not as effective as, as it was, but doesn't mean it's going to be less effective somewhere else because I do believe he's a good coach and he's going to have a you know, similar winning percentage elsewhere. Do you think a message for fans who have lost faith in the front office or don't have that faith right now? I mean, you can be more specific if you'd like. I think that's a generalization. If you feel that way, then I'm, you know, I'm perfectly happy to answer the question. You know, I don't think I've lost faith in myself as a manager. I don't think our winning percentage over the last six years, seven years that I've been as a general manager would necessarily support that. We haven't won. That, that's what supports that. And that's why I stand up here today to try and make the necessary changes. And I will. And to your, answer your question, if I don't, guess what? Somebody else will be standing up here. Because I referenced that with the, with the Jacobs family and, and with Cam. The, one of the best parts about working for this organization is to be held to that standard, knowing that you have the full latitude to make the recommendations and decisions that you think are right, and then when they're not, they get somebody else. That's as categorically honest as I can possibly be. That's as black and white as it is. To be held to that standard and aspire to, to be best in class is exactly what you want to be part of. And then, when the decision is made, they just categorically make a business decision and say, this is the best interest of the Boston Bruins, and I might not be part of that. Off of Scott's question, this is going to sound kind of jerkish, but like, why Bruce and not you, Cam, whoever? It, it may fall the other way at some point in time. Today, that's not the day. I made a decision as to what my recommendation would be in the change in the course. We have had a good team. We're going to continue to have a good team. Do we have to pivot based on you know where our injuries are and, and maybe we're it may come, and maybe they make the decision then that I'm not the right the right guy. As it stands right now, I have the support of of the people that I work with and work for, and I'm I'm thankful for that. Didn't make the decision to change the coach because of that made the decision because I'd been in the place when I hired Bruce six years ago and the same person that stands here today and say, I need to make a change. And uh, as I referenced, the messaging, the direction, and some of the things that, that aren't resonating as loudly as they did, that, that that's part of the exercise. So would you say that uh, Bruce, quote, unquote, lost the, the no. moment? No. No. You don't go out and get 107 points, win 51 games if players aren't responding to you. That, that just doesn't happen. You know, he's able to, to push the buttons that, uh, that are necessary. Um, but it, it takes its toll you know, over the course of time. It takes its toll. And you know, you've got to find a way to deliver that message a little differently and, uh, or the, the, the personnel changes and, and you cycle it out. That's, that's a little bit of the cycle of you know, what happens. You're not sure this is a competitive roster, but you also you don't have the first round pick, you don't have the two seconds. Where do you stand? Do you, are you at the point where you think you need to add Futures, do you need Futures from draft pick standpoint, Pluto? I, I mean, everybody would like to, to, you know, never trade picks and never necessarily have to give up. You could make lateral trades. and, and But, you know, when you get to the deadline, what, what team trying to win did that? You just have to. You know, you know you're going to leverage. And you try and spread it out as we did, and and uh, and then at some point in time, as I reference, you may have to be in a position where you are going to recoup, like we did in '15, and then you hope you do it and execute it, you know, to the nth degree. You know, like I said, we've done it well, but not well enough, and uh, and that's what we, uh, you know, the aspirations are to continue to do it better. So, to answer your question, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd certainly like to add, you know, from a future standpoint, and uh, and be much deeper and uh, and stocked. Chances are, if you've been a team that's that's been, you know, looking to win and be competitive every year for 15 or so years, you're going to sacrifice some things and there's going to be a trade-off and that's exactly what's happened. So you're, you, know? you feel you're at that point then, in terms of you need to, to make that decision now to recruit those picks 
No, I, I feel that we have a very competitive team. Do I, am I going to look to to make some changes and the necessary changes? Absolutely, and, and and part of that will be some of the younger guys that are, are coming on board, and whether or not they can make a difference. And maybe we get a, a, a glimpse of that with some of the injuries and the, and the rehabs that we have to go through, and, and then we did make a decision from there. What more do you want out of your roster? I want to win. Right, but what are the elements of that? Is it, do you think it's a skill? The fact that you can't get out of the first or second round, you think that's a skill issue, a toughness issue? Where, where, do you, where are we falling short in this roster? I think it's both. I think it's you know playing with a little bit more pace, and uh, maybe that's in the bottom six. I think we were we were uh, well equipped uh, depth wise, but you know when when certain players go through their their challenges. Other guys were they able to step up, and, and or did we stuck with the group? And that's that's on me. And you guys asked me the same question: whether I should have continued to add, add, add at the deadline, and and likely should have. Um, didn't necessarily say it was possible, or to the large point of, of leveraging even further. Then maybe not. Um, but you know, finding that balance of of youth and infusion and and pace of our game and and playing to that standard, getting a little bit more. And the war of attrition is a big part of this. I mean, nobody, you know would have thought that Lindholm and McAvoy, you know, would both have, have gotten injured in that first round series, but they did. So, you know, it does take its toll. The previous year we lost our right side. So history would tell me we better be well equipped on the back end when you're going into the playoffs in, in order to get through. It's just seemingly where things have, uh, have where injuries amount for us. Um, and uh, so we have to be, you have to be well balanced to take a run. You just do. Was there any concern that um, this decision might tip the scales as far as Bergeron and his decision making is maybe not wanting to play for new coach in his career or anything like that? No, I mean I've had you know multiple conversations with Patrice about about this organization uh, over the course of my time here. I continue to have them. Uh, he has too much respect for Bruce or for uh, for. Me or anybody to make recommendation about you know the coaches and who's going to play with uh, you know went through the same thing with Claude who he played you know and had a lot of success with and uh, it's more out of respect that he is and it, and in my conversations with him yesterday I did not ask you know whether this impacts his decision you know it's Bergie's decision you know in his timeline he referenced it when uh, you know during his acceptance of the of the Selkie. Are you working on anything with uh, with Pasternak and if? Bergeron or potentially Krejci doesn't come, does that at all affect whether you go in the direction of him being how you potentially recoup some picks? Uh, well, we can't have a discussion with, with uh, David until uh, the calendar year flips over in the 13th. So, But I've said all along that I will attack that one as I have with, with all of our players that we've looked to, to go longer term on um, right away. And you know, see where it goes. David has a decision making that in that same vein, and uh, you know, he might be sitting back and balancing the same way with you know, whether that's Patrice or anybody else that we're adding. So you know, those conversations will come to light, and, and I'll have to make a decision based on uh, on the information that I get. Not today, I don't. Not when I sit here today. Could change, but no. No, I, I've had a discussion with David's people. David has flown back to uh, South Carolina, and I, I, uh, I expect at some point in time that we'll communicate. If this is a bad situation, what is your take on the fact that Bergeron and Scouting have to use those picks in a way that does restock the system? I mean, there's been a tremendous amount of rhetoric. You want to ask the obvious question whether or not we failed in 2015 to to knock it out of the park in our draft and go ahead and ask. I mean, it's not like I haven't been addressed it <laughs> before. Uh, the draft is is what it is. You try and do the absolute best job you possibly can. I think that uh, we have several players that have, have certainly turned into really good NHL players. Uh, I don't believe that we executed it to the level we were capable of. Um, so you need to continue to do it better. And subsequent drafts we have, you know, at times, and other drafts we haven't. Uh, that's a little bit of the variance that's associated with, with drafting 18-year-old kids and doesn't put any of the onus elsewhere except on us to continue to look to do it, you know, to the, to the best of our abilities, and I'm sure every team feels the exact same way. Best case scenario, if you see this team as a cup next year? 
Yeah, best case, it has to be has to be healthy, and uh, and that's a little bit of a variance where I stand here today. You know, I mean, wasn't sure that. You know, I referenced that Marsh was was going in for MRIs. You know, we just weren't we didn't have the information a few weeks ago that he was having his hips done, and, and certainly that Charlie was going to have to have his shoulder done. You know, we knew on Grizz and Mike Riley is a little more of a maintenance thing, and Bergeron's was a maintenance thing. Um, how they come out of it and and where they get back into the lineup may determine that ultimately. Um, but they're really good players, and I expect they will 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 relaunch themselves back to the same level that they're capable of, which would indicate that we're we're going to be a a really strong team again if I can do some things this summer. John, you're, uh, you're talk about needing a new voice with the fire and You're the one that constructed the team. Will a new voice make it difference if you're still here calling shots? Well, I certainly hope so. I mean that's that's the intention of of you know when you put together a team uh, over the course of time you've had some success, I think you should take some comfort in the fact that you've made some good decisions in that regard. Maybe not to the same level of, of the team that's won, and that's what you hold yourself you know, to that standard. Um, I, I think that exact same rhetoric was in place when, when I promoted Bruce. And I would say it's going to remain until the next coach comes in here and does what, what I hope he's capable of doing with, with the group of players that we have. So the answer will be in, in, in what our record is and what, what our accomplishments are. Maybe you'll have a chance to ask, ask the next guy that. Does the next candidate, uh, would you like them to have had NHL experience? Why a veteran NHL coach can it be somebody that you know maybe comes from college or doesn't have you know the NHL experience? Uh, I'm, well, I'm certainly going to be open-minded. I'm going to cast the net a little wider, and, and uh, I don't think it's an absolute prerequisite. Uh, you know, as I said, we've got a an experienced group of guys that uh, you know want to win, uh, know how to win, and uh, and a young group of guys as the next core, you know Charlie and David, uh, you know being part of that that uh, that that hopefully can bridge and continue to bridge what that the young, next young group of guys are going to come in. Now the coach needs to to direct that ship and uh, be able to communicate effectively with across all those age groups, and uh, and that's what I, I certainly want to uh, to make sure I cast the net wide enough. I don't believe it's an absolute prerequisite to have coached by the NHL bench, you know. Time for a couple more. It's all right. Reference McAvoy and Lindholm being injured. Um, you mentioned the, the, war, the war of attrition with injuries. Again, uh, sort of having a hard time connecting how that relates to the coach. I mean, what, what can a coach do to prevent these things from happening? Because it does seem that sort of your brain the uh, injuries and whatnot. I guess I. Where, what was the connection I made with with the injuries to well, McAvoy? Like, that, that, that was a big problem with your team you know, this year. How is that on the coach that they lose? You lose two key defensemen. You still push Carolina in Game Seven. I just I'm trying to connect the dots here in terms of how Cassie could prevent that something like that from happening. I don't think I referenced that Bruce could prevent that from happening. I think I answered the question to you know Kevin of, of some of the things that go into making the decision and, and why you might not have success, and they're all parts of that. Um, did you have a more well, direct you know, question you'd, you'd like me to answer? If you're healthy and you beat Carolina, do you think that you're still sitting here today and changing coaches? I mean, it just seems like that's the depth is an issue, but I don't know what coaching does to sort of fix that. Well, hypothetically, if we had continued on in the playoffs and won the Stanley Cup, no, I probably am happy about the parade that, that we're, we're, we're on. And uh, that's sometimes the, the margins. The margins, as you just referenced in the Carolina series, were really – we knew that going in. They were really small. That was a really good hockey team. And, you know, it would have taken us to execute. I, I don't think the depth of our lineup, you know, shown through five on five like they had for January, February, and March. That's, you know, some of the issues that, that reared its head, you know, at, at an inopportune time. The attrition is part of the exercise. You know, when you lose those players, that's a difficult thing to overcome as an organization and a team. That I did not place on the head coach in terms of, of why they got injured or how they got injured. Just as I referenced the answer, you know, Kevin's question, and I try to do my best to answer yours. When you made the, the change with Bruce six years ago, five years ago, there was a fundamental change in play, going from Claude's philosophy to his philosophy. Do you think that's where you are now? Is you need, you need a fundamental change in the way this team plays? 
I don't think it's a fundamental change. I do believe there are some, some things that we need to continue to evolve at and incorporate. Um, we had some open discussions and, you know, the coach and staff every year does things on their own, you know, as to how they want to play. And we talk about those openly and, and, and uh, in a collaborative manner and no different for our staff, be it scouts, be it analytics, be it myself and the people that watch the team. How can we continue to evolve with the group that we have? Is the personnel capable of doing that? And what are the other... I mean, I don't think it's a pure copycat league, but what are other teams doing better than we're doing? And vice versa, other teams look at us and say, well, they do this pretty well. They've copied and changed. Coaches collaborate around the league. I mean, let's, let's be honest, they do. They pick each other's brains. I, I just spent time with Team Canada watching a coaching staff that were highly competitive with each other pick each other's brains. And, and how do they continue to evolve? And uh, I don't think we're going to be any different in trying to incorporate some of those things in areas of our game that. Now, you're going to ask the new coach, you look at the personnel, I'm going to get f feedback from coaches that I'm going to interview. What is this group capable of doing and how the stylistic tweaks that you had to make? There were some significant changes in our game when Bruce took over. And uh, I think we benefited from it. And uh, to a large degree, and, and I'm hopeful that uh, that a new coach bringing in will, will have the, the proper tweaks as well. I know you and I have last one. You and I have disagreed on this in terms of team toughness, individual toughness. You think it's had enough? I don't. What do you think today? I, I mean, I don't think we've ever disagreed in having team toughness. Uh, I think I was. I played for a lot of teams that had team toughness. I played for teams that didn't, and you're exposed. I do believe that. Uh, you absolutely categorically need team toughness across the board. Um, and I think, you know, watching Colorado, McDermott hasn't played the, you know, the entire playoffs. So when you're talking about having an element, whereas Reeves, again, I'm referencing two, you know, individual players that, that define what, what you may be describing. And uh, it's just a mindset of your team that has to have it. There are pockets of the season and certain um, opponents you know, I will reference too, and specifically, you know, the two games against Nashville last year were hard-nosed games. Nashville led the team, led the league in, in fights by a wide margin. Um, I don't think that we were lacking in team toughness uh, and a response in any way, shape, or form in either one of those games outside of when Bergeron got popped and whether or not our team responded as appropriately as they could. That being said, that next game against Nashville, I think they did respond, and that's what I reference as team toughness. And I think we are, I'm completely siding with you in the fact that I think it's, it's necessary for our marketplace and our identity of our hockey club that we have it. Were you tough enough in the playoffs? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we took, you know, more penalties, you know, than, uh, than Carolina, which, you know, at times is puzzling, but uh, that's how it played out. Uh, you know, we got hurt. We had guys get hurt. Grizzly left that series. McAvoy, you know, left for uh, COVID, but also got injured in that series. And uh, Lindholm left that series. Yeah, I don't know if that's toughness. Uh, maybe it's just bad luck in that sense. Um, I want that in our, our team, but I don't want to trade it off for, for skill and speed. I want to balance. Thanks very much.